Mr. Speaker, in answering this question, I really want to urge the country and the House that they should not charge us, they should not use the benchmark of the previous recruitment. It's the first recruitment under my leadership and it's the first recruitment under this uh, administration. Mr. Speaker, KDF recruitment process is guided by the Constitution of Kenya, specifically Article 10 1C that protects and provides for national values and principles of governance which will bind all state organs, state officers, public officers, and all persons whenever any of them makes or implements public policy decisions. The Speaker, the Ministry of Defense is determined to protect Kenyans from fraudsters posing as KDF recruitment agents bent on marrying on an open, free, fair recruitment process. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, at the beginning of every recruitment cycle, eligible applicants are provided with very clear guidelines on when and where they should present themselves and how should they should apply to join Kenya Defense Forces. Indeed, the public is always advised during the recruitment drive to avoid giving bribes and other favors to impersonate in the pretext that they will be assisted in securing employment in the KDF. Mr. Speaker, we have stated notwithstanding their isolated instance where KDF personnel have been involved in recruitment malpractices. And to serve as a deterrence, Mr. Speaker, all suspected cases have been thoroughly investigated. Those found culpable subjected to judicial process in the form of court martial, often leading to dismissal from service or imprisonment. And Mr. Speaker, the answer which I have provided to this House, I think in about five to six copies, I have attached Annex A that provides into the status of the completed and ongoing cases of individual officers and more so general officers who were prosecuted since the last recruitment, which was in July of last year. Mr. Speaker, that annex will show you the rank of those officers. It will show you the crime they committed, and all these officers faced the court martial precisely because of recruitment. The speaker, the second question was, explain the affirmative action strategies that the government is putting in place to ensure Kenyans from marginalized communities and regions are considered elusive for military jobs. Mr. Speaker, if you allow me, I think the volition was to solve marginalization. I am sure there are issues, but I think the, the term marginalized, Mr. Speaker, will be a thing of the past very soon. Mr. Speaker, KDF is conscious of the country's ethnic diversity and always promotes a national outlook among its ranks. And even if you look at the hierarchy and the leadership of Kenya Defense Force, Mr. Speaker, on the face of it, represents the face of Kenya in terms of diversity, tribe, religion, and the region they come from. This is predicted, Mr. Speaker, is predicated on the Defense Force's primary role of defending and protecting the country on the basis of inclusion. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, the distribution of slots, selection, and development of KDF human capital is inherently reflected on the face of Kenya on the account of equity as required in our Constitution. One of the guiding principles, Mr. Speaker, in KDF Act of 2012 that stipulates that recruitment must reflect the diversity of the Kenyan people in a allowable proportion that ensures that the composition of the command of KDF also embraces the principle of equity and inclusivity. And Mr. Speaker, since I took over, as a Minister for Defense, one of the principles that I say people will remember for me as a Minister for Defense is to make sure 
that the rank and the leadership of Kenya Defense Forces reflects the diversity and the communities in our country. Therefore, equitable distribution of slots to counties, sub-counties, and divisions in some places always are computed at the planning phase of the recruitment circle and they are based on the following parameters. Number one, national population according to the latest national census. Two, population and demography, demography in each county, sub-county, and in some cases, some divisions. Three, K KDF human resource needs on the current manning levels among KDF officers, service members, and constables. Four, current number of officers, service members, and constables from each and each sub-county. So Mr. Speaker, we look at holistically the numbers of our human resource in K Kenya Defense Forces. And based on that, we will look at the numbers from each sub-county. And based on that, we will create slots for every county, for every sub-county uh, in our country. So Speaker, sometimes we look at the social political variables, rural versus urban, marginalized groups and indigenous groups. Speaker, finally, the recruiting officers are required to submit to the defense headquarters daily returns to satisfy the defense leadership that quotes, quotas are being enforced. So, Mr. Speaker, for example, in a sub-county in Bungoma County, if the number to be recruited were eight or ten, Speaker, just like IBC, we have a command center at the defense headquarters. On real time, the moment those seven are recruited, their ID, their names, their age, everything is submitted to make sure that in between, Mr. Speaker, there were many times people were making uh, 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 a lot of, uh, were using a lot of corruption, where seven people will go to the, to the recruitment center, they are told you have been taken, and in the evening they are chased away and replaced with other people. Speaker, I really want to uh, I, I assure you, this house, because we are oversighted by the representative of the people. Myself and General Ogola will make sure that the moment the seven are recruited, our command center, the defense headquarters, in real time, will receive them so that nobody in this recruitment can change anything. And I want the House to take me to charge on that matter, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, finally, was the question of explaining the mechanism that government has put in place to enable Kenyans report malpractices witnessed during subsequent. Speaker, first, before I tell the country the mechanism, I want Kenyans not to bribe our officers. That's the beginning. Because the bribe taker, there must be the giver. So there are people I'm sure who are watching me. Some of them are con men, some of them are fraudsters, some of them make cash during the recruitment. Parents, I want to talk to the parents of Kenya. Don't bribe anybody. Let your son and daughter present themselves at the recruiting center and our officers are under obligation to make sure that each and every Kenyan is given an opportunity. Mr. Speaker, the Kenyan Defense Forces Recruitment Drive has a lot of adverts, free to all eligible candidates, members of the public are warned against engaging in malpractices, a view to influence the process, and they are encouraged to report any suspicious. To speak at all our recruitment centers, recruiting officers are required to make verbal announcement, reiterating the implication of non-compliance with a warning to desist. To speaker, this year we have asked AAC and the DCI and all other civil society organizations within the locality we are recruiting to make sure that they are on standby and our members, our officers are not vulnerable. We will give a call number where even parents can call and say there was a fraud, uh, fraud going on. So, Mr. Speaker, I really want to uh, ask this House that uh, judge us, judge me, judge General Ogola, and the entire leadership of Kenya Defense Forces on this recruitment. And I'm sure there will be a difference this time around.
plano ser é bad toilet bad simba of kisauni yes asante sana uh, all bad simba hold hold your joy rider the first bite must go to the oh, member who asked the question to ask us to remember 